Hello from Disney's Animal Kingdom. Join me for a day in the parks. I love it when you walk to the right and you can't see exactly what's happening, but you do see a crowd looking at something. That's because Divine is there. She really does blend in well with the environment. I've been reading a lot of Imagineering books lately. In Marty Sklar's book, he talks about how as soon as they started working on this park, their head of landscaping was really eager to start getting some trees and testing if things like bamboo would survive multiple seasons here. They wanted this park to look very lush from day one. Let's start our day at Animal Kingdom by heading over to Pandora. Now that we're in Pandora, why don't we start at Navi River Journey? Speaking of landscaping, these pathways around Pandora are just completely stunning. All right, let's board our little boat. I'll catch you at the end of the journey. I understand why that's not the most popular attraction, but I really do like it. First of all, it takes a classic ride format, the boat ride, but um, the all the wayside effects are really vivid and really beautiful. It's really enveloping, and uh, I, I think it's beautiful. I love especially that effect of the, the frog-like creatures jumping on the leaves that are overhead with the motion of the leaves that really sell it. The other thing I like about it is that the big effect, the, the, the number one big effect there is kind of the climax of the ride. It's right there at the end. That's the shaman animatronic, which when it works like it was today, it's actually kind of cool to see. I put in my mobile order for Satuli Canteen. There I got the grilled chicken bowl with rice and beans base. It tastes great and I'm no nutritionist, but I think this is a pretty sensible theme park meal. All right, Satuli Cantina is a great meal, and based on the way things looked when I walked out, I missed the big lunch rush, so uh, good for me, right? Let's carry on with our journey at Animal Kingdom. I was walking in the direction of Festival of the Lion King with just maybe 15 minutes until the next show, so I hustle over there and get into the theater just in time.
love watching Festival of the Lion King because there's so much talent there. They do such a good job putting that show together. And you look around and you see all the people who are just, uh, it brings so much joy to them. And I just I like looking around, seeing the kids. I think for a lot of kids sitting in that theater, that might be the first live theater experience they have. There's good showmanship there. It's really dazzling. So I think it's a good way to introduce young kids to theater. Now let's head over to Expedition Everest. All right. One fun fact is how they get the steam you see coming off these trains in the loading area. Expedition Everest trains don't have any power at all, let alone steam power. So when they're parked in the loading area, this steam is actually coming up from the steam generator on the other side of the tracks. It's fed through a pipe underneath the train and a valve opens when the train is in the right position. That's the pipe right there. All right, it's our turn to board. Let's check out some of the merch. Whoa, check out the colors on this jacket. I was looking at the pins when this caught my eye, so I decided to grab another. That was a nice little morning at Animal Kingdom. I'm gonna go home, take a break, and then this evening, I think I'm gonna go to Hollywood Studios. I'm back home, let's check out how we did with our pin collection. All right, we needed R2-D2. And we needed K2SO, awesome. My collection is coming together nicely. Hello from Disney's Hollywood Studios, let's go have some fun. So I have no plan for Hollywood Studios. I think I want to get dinner at Docking Bay 7, but even that I'm not sure about. Looks like Mickey and Minnie's Runaway Railway is having a little trouble today. On Grand Avenue, this beverage spot now has a name, Hydraulics. This area is so nice, but so underutilized. This transition from Grand Avenue into Galaxy's Edge is amazing. Let's have a little stroll through the market. You know, it was the hype that was leading up to the opening of Star Wars Galaxy's Edge that got me into Star Wars. I knew this whole land was going to be epic, so I really wanted to know what was going on, so I watched all the movies and even read the book of, that had the story for Galaxy's Edge. It really helped me appreciate what went into all of this. This transition from Star Wars to Toy Story is not as impressive on this side. I zip through Toy Story Land and head back out to the center of the park.
I walk down Sunset Boulevard to check out Tower of Terror, but decide not to ride it this evening. All right, I just placed my order for dinner at Docking Bay 7. Uh, I'm feeling a little hungry, so I'm gonna run over there and go get it. Okay, thank you. You're welcome, have a great night. Thank you. I got the impossible meatballs, hummus, pita, and Israeli salad. Another sensible meal, I think. And I think this one tastes really good. After that, I head back out to Galaxy's Edge and towards the front of the park. Hey, why don't we check out some merch? I like these black tote bags. Ooh, and this sweatshirt too, but I have too many sweatshirts to be honest. Ooh, but it's in yellow too, I like that. I really like this yellow tote, it's awesome. And it has long and short handles, that's pretty cool. Let's head across the street. I've seen a few people wearing these embroidered character beanies. I like them a lot. Oh, and this animal hat is so awesome. Okay, I'm gonna get one more of these and head out. Let's see how I did. Ooh. That's dupe. Ah, there's a new one for us. Thank you so much for coming along with me. I hope you had a fun time. I'll catch you in the parks.